Hello, Healing Overflow family. Welcome back to Healing Overflow with Dr. Toy. Y'all know I'm Dr. Toy. I'm so happy to see y'all again. I hope y'all are doing well. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sending in your Healing Overflow with Dr. Toy comments and ask a therapist questions. Listen, y'all are really out there showing me some love. I really appreciate it, y'all. Um, I always have Healing Overflow with Dr. Toy Ask a Therapist Questions segment. Sometimes it's its own show. So send in those questions. Keep sending them in. Click on that link below or email me directly at Dr. Toy. Nope, that ain't right. Toya J at Pitt.edu. It's Toya J at Pitt.edu. Goodness, y'all. I had coffee today. All right. Listen, keep watching and listening to the Healing Overflow with Dr. Toy Social Work Podcast. Um, bi-weekly, every first and third Thursday at noon, just like you've been. If you miss some episodes, that's okay. Click on the link below and get caught up. Our topic today is so important. We got to get in there, y'all. We got to get in there and talk about it. We are talking about healing after a breakup. Ugh. Yes, very important, and we have to talk about it. I gathered some tips from... Um, experts in the field, tips that I use with, um, you know, myself in the past and also with my therapy clients. And I went to the airways and the byways and the highways, and I asked our viewers and listeners for what is the best advice that you can give or the best advice you received after enduring a breakup or a divorce. And listen, they showed up and showed out. Y'all showed up and showed out. And so I will read and share those advice and suggestions and tips at the end. And then I will share my tips and also give you some resources. You know, I, got, I can't leave you empty handed. I got to hook you up. All right. Oh, speaking of empty handed, you know, you get that gift card if I answer your question on the Healing Overflow with Dr. Toy Show. All right. You get that Starbucks gift card. Some of y'all got it. Y'all are sipping as you watch. All right, y'all, let's get into it. So a breakup. You've gone through a breakup. You're going through a breakup. Listen, it will not always be like this. It will not always feel so awful. Breakups are awful. They feel terrible. Even if the person, you're looking at them like, I'm probably better off. It, it doesn't feel that way initially. And it doesn't feel like it'll be better days. You won't always have rain clouds. You know, all of those. It, it doesn't work when you're really in the thick of it and you're in that dark tunnel and you're really feeling that awfulness and that pain. So, uh, you know, it's always around that time. Um, we're seeing on social media, we're seeing couples smooched up with hearts, holding hands, swinging their hands in the park, eating dinner and giggling. And that's when it really hurts. The love songs coming on the radio and you're turning it off quickly. Listen, if you're not there right now, you've been there and you know what I'm talking about. I've been there too, y'all. So, uh, th this show is really important because I do believe that sharing some tips will help us to heal, will help you to heal through this breakup. Breakups are so hard, in my opinion, because our dreams didn't come true. You know, it was, it was the fantasy that wasn't fulfilled. It was a womp, womp, womp. We thought it was going to be this lovely marriage or this lovely relationship and a life partner even. And we had hopes, we had high hopes and it, it, it tuckered out, fizzled out, you know, and sometimes we know why. And sometimes we don't, sometimes that person completely changed. And we say, what happened to the person that I first met? And, and, you know, we had that banter and the giggle and we really related to one another. What happened to that person? And it starts to turn into from the dream to the nightmare, okay? I watched this show called Married at First Sight. Everyone has these big hopes. They marry people, if you haven't seen it, it's like season 826, <laughs> episode 5,264. But these couples come from all over, all over the United States, um, and they get together and they never met. 
until they get to the altar and they marry one another. And I always say, I watch every season, y'all, and I say, who would do that? Why would you do that? And it's not desperation because these are some, they're beautiful candidates inside and outside. I think it's because of the hopes and the dreams and the fantasies. We could have a house. We could have two and a half kids. We could have a dog and a cat and a fish, you know, and all of that fantasy and all of that dream, you know, it's a beautiful fantasy and dream, but it doesn't always work out that way. And a lot of times these couples that end in divorce, and it is so sad when you see it unraveling. You got to watch the show. I get no endorsements, but the show is so interesting. <laughs> And, you know, not fulfilling that fantasy and, and, and completing that dream feels like a failure. And when we feel like we failed at something, we internalize that and say, that's my identity. I am a failure. I couldn't do it right. You know, I didn't do this relationship successfully. It wasn't successful. And so, therefore, what's wrong with me? And we tend to have cognitive distortions. So y'all know I'm a therapist. I'm a CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy. I totally believe in the thinking process and the cognitive triad and all those things. And basically it's, you know, what we think we feel and it produces actions. But I'm going to go beyond that and talk about core beliefs because when we have a breakup, oftentimes our core belief or our theme, I talk about having a script written in our heads and we play out that play or or that Broadway production, that script in our everyday life. And the core beliefs that we have, and usually it's one belief and you can see that theme working itself throughout our life. Um, the three core beliefs, the three themes are helplessness, okay, unlovable and worthlessness. So I'm going to break it down because usually when we go through a breakup, that unlovable core belief is screaming at us. Whatever reason we have that I'm unlovable belief usually comes from childhood. You know, isn't that the therapist's answer? We're like, what happened in childhood? It came from childhood most of the time, y'all. That, that helplessness usually comes from I need somebody to do this life journey with. I need you. I need to know who I am through you. And when we break up with that person, we lost our identity. We no longer know who we are and we have to find ourselves. Okay, Dr. Toy, but I'm, I'm 30, I'm 40, I'm 50. I don't need to be finding myself. Exactly. And that's, that's that desperation and that hopelessness and helplessness that happens when you're like, I need an anchor. I need to know who I am. And then feeling worthless is feeling unworthy, feeling unworthy of having a healthy relationship, feeling like you're damaged. Something's wrong with me. What is my pattern? You know, why do I keep attracting people that hurt me? That it must be me. And you, be, you begin to internalize those negative and distorted cognitions. Okay. But I'm here to say you can interrupt, you can interrupt the pattern. You can break that pattern when you're learning about yourself. So take the time to get to know who you are during this breakup period. It is not the end. It is not after we were together. It is now beginning solitude. It's beginning introspection. You're beginning to heal from within and get to know who you are. And baby, you're going to get to love who you are. I'm going to tell you that right now because you're, it's not um, a, a malfunctioning of yourself that caused the breakup. It's because y'all weren't supposed to be together and that's okay. You learn something from every breakup. Think, it, think about the breakups you've had in your life. Some of them were de devastating. Some, some of them were like, goodbye, I'm so glad you're leaving. <laughs> go on now, go. Walk out the door, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and some of them leave us very liberated. But the ones that feel like we got like, <laughs> like a dagger through our heart, those are the ones that leave us with something to learn so that we're not repeating the same patterns for next time. If you look at the folks that you break up with and you say, I have a pattern of getting with people that I need to rescue and heal. This is the time where you can say, no, no, 
No longer will I do that. I'll choose wisely. I will choose the folks that don't have the red flags or I'll identify the red flags and say, no, thank you. That's not for me. I won't ignore the red flags. You see where I'm going with that? Mm -hmm. And so without the breakup, it's hard for you to really learn that that life lesson. And let me tell y'all, you keep on learning and learning and learning. I have a doctorate. I'm not done learning. I've just begun. You know, I'm young. You know, we keep learning. We keep learning. And we learn from mistakes. We learn from past failures. And we learn how to dig ourselves up and climb out and see the light. We triumph over adversity. That's who we are, right? Okay. It, it is breakup is a grieving moment. And so for some reason, we feel like we can grieve over loved ones that pass, but we can't grieve over our identity and our past self that died with that relationship. When you deal with infidelity, that relationship has died. Even if you decide to stay together, you are now birthing a new relationship. You are not trying to fix the old one. There was too many patches in that boat. It's a now a new relationship. If you d decide to leave after they cheat on you, that is your decision. And you're going to hear a bunch of noise in your ear. You should stay, work it out, all of that. My tip, and I'm going to share some more tips at the end. Once you're done, you're done, y'all. You tried everything you could. The door slammed closed. Keep it closed. Don't go looking through photo albums and your phone and pictures. When the memories pop up, ooh, the memories pop up. Get rid of the memories that pop up on social media. Get rid of the pictures. Get rid of the gifts that y'all exchange. There is no more anniversaries. Don't go stalking on <laughs> social media, looking them up and seeing what they're up to and who they with and all that. That's not helpful. It's not helpful. And you don't want to focus on just all the good stuff. Well, we used to go here to dinner and it was so beautiful. If it was so beautiful, you wouldn't have broken up. So focus on both. The whole scenario. You got to be real with yourself. Focus on the whole scenario. Okay? There was good times, but there was bad times. And make sure you're focusing on the bad times too. Wait a minute, Dr. Toy. You're saying focus on bad times? You got to be real with yourself and say, yes, that was good. But they were toxic when they said this, this, and this. Remind yourself of why you're not together. Now, I'm not saying go flip on the other side and demonize the person because that doesn't work either. All bad. They were horrible. Okay, that doesn't help either. Have the concept of the whole self, the whole person. And that, that includes yourself. You know, who was I in that relationship? Who am I now after the relationship? Who were they when we were together? It wasn't good. It wasn't horrible. It wasn't all great. It was what it was. Okay? And that's reality. Okay. So, let's see. What else? Making up your mind that you don't always need answers in order to have closure. This was a big one for me back in the day when I was breaking up with people. Now I've been married for 21 years almost. <laughs> so you don't need answers to the questions in order to be able to close the door and move on. You don't, you don't need the answers. You don't need sorry. You don't need an apology from them. You don't need to see them one more time so you could talk about it and figure it out. And then now you can close the door. It just keeps pulling it up and stirring it back up. It's not part of the healing. You can't heal with the person standing in your face, scraping at your wounds. If you share children or property or, or a furry pet baby together, that's one thing. You exchange and move on. You do not have to sit down and walk back down memory lane and tee hee on a sofa and Netflix and chill. That's going to get you right back down into that tunnel. And it's not the tunnel of love. Okay. So think about the fact that and come to reality and come to a satisfaction 
and an acceptance that you may not ever know all the answers. And that has to be okay. All you need is what's in you and what the answers are within you and not them. You can never get into their heads. You don't know what they were thinking and why did they do this? You need to tell me some more details. You get closure on your own. You get closure through your loving circle, through the people that love you and want you to win and they're around you rooting for you. Okay? Okay. I had to say that. That's important. Okay. Let's see. Reintroduce yourself to old and new things. Sometimes we get so engulfed and indulged in that relationship that we forget about old friends. We forget about all the things we used to do. We stop singing or playing our instruments. We stop playing our sport. Reintroduce yourself. Welcome back to you and who you really are. And put some new stuff in there, too. Try new things that you might have been afraid to try or that your partner wouldn't do with you. Do it now in celebration of yourself. Okay? Okay, that's some of my tips. I want to share with y'all, um, I listened to a show on NPR. And it was so good. And it, it was called uh, Making a Clean Break. I thought it was excellent. And so that was on, oh, no. I lied. It was called How to Turn Your Breakup into a New Beginning. There you go. <laughs> On NPR, it was really good. Take a listen to that. Um, some of the tips are in there, and I shared it with you. Um, my other thought is, you know, you know, there are a lot of my viewers and listeners that are spiritual, and I'm moving into the segment where I said to my viewers and listeners, give me your best advice for someone or the best advice that you received after a breakup or divorce. Um, I am absolutely a proponent of getting back in touch with your spirituality, using your spirituality for your strength. And so some of my viewers and some of my listeners share that with you. So I just wanted to let you know that they're not, not necessarily my views or the views of the University of Pittsburgh, but they are views that um, I find very important and I wanted to share. Okay. Let's go to the phone lines. All right, no, I'm not Oprah. There's no phone lines. So I'm just going to go with, let's go to the viewers and listeners and um, see what the audience, see what your advice is. Okay. Cheyenne, thank you for responding to the call. And thank you for sharing um, your advice. Cheyenne's advice says, pray. Give yourself time to heal. Don't jump into anything. Therapy? is always an option. Oh, you know from a therapist, I think that is some really good advice. You don't have to jump into anything. You don't have to get up and shake it off and listen, take your time. Take time for yourself to heal. And therapy is always, uh, you know, a good option, especially when you feel stuck, y'all. If you feel like you're just not getting past the anger and the resentment in the morning, Pull in a specialist. I'm going to talk about two at the end of the show, but pull in a specialist. There are folks that specialize in relationship and healing after a breakup and all those things, okay? Find them and get in there um, if you have insurance. If you don't have insurance, there are free places. Um, there are places you can go to that can help fund your therapy, okay? Kate. Kate, you said you are better off alone following the Lord than with someone who doesn't respect and cherish you. Listen, you are better off without someone that is toxic and doesn't respect you and doesn't cherish you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Kate. That is, that is so good. Delise, you said be patient with yourself while you heal. Don't rush the process based on other people's opinion. <laughs> Nuggets dropped on that one, Delise. People will say, stay with them. People will say, break up. You know, you don't know what to listen to. You listen to yourself. And you know, you know that it's not going to be a snapshot. If you fell down and you broke your leg, you wouldn't expect to get up and start jump roping and hopscotching and running. You would, you would not expect that. You would go to the doctors. You would get a cast you would know that it's going to take several weeks, if not months, for that leg to heal. Why don't we treat our broken hearts that way? 
Yeah. You have to. It's a journey. It's a healing journey. And so take your time and be good to you. Don't rush the process. Thank you, Dalis. Okay. Faye. Faye, you said you need plenty of TLC after a breakup. You must practice self and self-care and compassion in order to heal. Self-talk, self-love, and self-care. You see that TLC in there? I like the way you did that, Faye. Thank you so much. Yes, you need plenty of tender, loving care. Every time I see T TLC, I think of Michael Jackson. I want to love you. Pretty young thing. But listen, you want to love yourself with tender, loving care. You want that self-talk, that good self-talk, that you are a beautiful, you are a wonderful person. You deserve everything great. You deserve the best, you know, self-love. Giving yourself, I love essential oils, y'all. I put some lavender on my hands just so I could go like this all day today. <laughs> and I have a diffuser. I put that in there. I take care of myself, whatever that might, might be. Working out, taking a walk, getting your nails done, drinking. I love drinking coffee or a, a beautiful taste of tea or something like that. Comfort foods are okay, too, in moderation. You know, get your mashed potatoes. Get that bowl of Captain Crunch, whatever your comfort food may be. Take care of yourself. Thank you, Faye. Thank you for listening and watching. So Jenny, Jenny, you gave us advice as a friend hearing someone breaking up. You gave us, you gave us some great tips, and I'm going to share them right now. Jenny says divorce isn't always a bad thing. Ooh, okay. So you don't need to be feeling sorry for the person. It's not always a bad thing. Okay, Jenny says... And neither is being single. Mm. When we immediately say things like, it's too bad. It's too bad you couldn't make your marriage work. It's too bad. Or don't worry, you'll find someone else soon. We're making an assumption that the marriage was worth saving. <laughs> Come on, Jenny. <laughs> Sometimes it's not. That's what Jenny said. Or we are implying that the person isn't better off being single. And sometimes they are. Hold the applause till the end, y'all. You don't need to say, oh, good, I'm glad you're not with them because they want nothing but a, and they're horrible anyway, and you're better off without them. A lot of times people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that right away. They might know they're better off. They might not know at that point. So hold the applause is what I have to say till the end. And don't assume that they need someone to feel whole because sometimes you need you to feel complete and whole again. I love it, Jenny. Thank you so much. Joshua, Joshua said, know that you have to do some deep inner healing and deep counseling. And Joshua put deep in all caps. I hear it, I feel it. You have to do some deep inner healing. And deep inner healing takes time, doesn't it? Sometimes in order to get that deep inner healing, you need deep counseling. And you need deep therapy to get at the root. What is causing these patterns? Why am I feeling so broken? And feeling broken and upset, you should. Don't deny it. You, you sit in it for a minute, then you get out of that thing. You pull yourself out. I can't pull myself out. Then the people around you, you let them know. You put them on high alert. I need y'all to get the shovels and dig me out of this. I'm not feeling so good. Okay? Keep people around you and don't push them away. It's a journey, not a sprint to the end. You continue to learn yourself. I love it. Joshua, thank you so much. Gail, Gail said, organize your world to make room and prepare for what God has for you next. Prepare for the good thing to come, y'all. Make room, tidy up, clean up on the outside and the inside and expect better things for yourself because the universe, the God, the higher power, they want what's best for you and you want what's best for you and everyone that loves you wants what's next, what's best, what is more to come. Thank you, Gail. Janie, 
Janie said, please, please help me understand when a title of divorced <laughs> is removed like a dark cloud over our heads. Oh, my goodness, Janie. Janie said, I no longer market on applications. Good for you, Janie. That, that dark cloud is removed whenever you say it is. There's no timeline for this healing process. And I love that you said the time is now. I'm removing that. I'm not going to be divorced forever. I love that, Janie. That's right. Thank you for that. Listen, y'all, a breakup, a divorce, it's not a permanent mark on you, okay? It is a period in a paragraph full of sentences. This is just a paragraph and your whole dissertation of life. That's it. It's a sentence or a paragraph at best, but it's a period in one sentence. That's what I want y'all to remember. So read on to the end of your dissertation, your novel. Read on to the end and see what is to come. The ending is great. You're going to make it through it. You're going to get out of it. But right now, you accept that the pain is here, okay? And it won't always feel like that. Okay, Dr. Yoded, you said we know ourselves through relationships to others, but we're pressured to stay with someone because the community pressures us. And it's embarrassing if we break up. Yes. And so Dr. Yoded says, push past the embarrassment. Don't always listen to the chatter from the outside and listen to yourself when you know it's done. It's over and I need to make this break. Thank you, Dr. Yoded. Okay. I had a question from a, from a viewer and listening audience that said, should you date again? Well, that's completely up to you, y'all, when you are ready. You don't want to take in baggage to the next relationship. Erica Badu has this song called Bag Lady, right? And I think it's bag lady, bag man, bag non-binary person, right? Don't carry those bags into the next relationship. And so whenever you're ready, then you go for it. But you make sure you're breaking those patterns. I have a couple quotes from some experts out there. Esther Perel, I love this quote. Um, she's a relationship expert. And she says, instead of looking for a person who checks all the boxes, focus on a person with whom you can imagine yourself writing a story with that entails edits and revisions. Ooh, that was good, right? Mm-hmm. Radiate what you want to attract, y'all. Okay? Put on what you want to pull in. Who is it that I want to attract? You be that person. You be that person. Dr. George James says, okay, Dr. George has George Talks newsletter that I get, and I love it, and I read it. And so um, the latest George Talks newsletter said this, quote, Intentional kindness serves as a reminder that empathy and goodwill are choices within our grasp, fostering a sense of warmth and unity that enriches both the giver and the receiver. Thank you, Dr. George. That was amazing. Uh, that to me means whatever I radiate, I'm attracting. If I am putting out and making an intentional effort to be gentle and kind and warm it's going to bless me, but it's going to also bless the receiver. That person is going to thrive from what I put out, and that draws that same energy to me. Thank you, Dr. George. Check out Dr. George and his, wife, his website at georgetalks.com. That's G-E-O-R-G-E talks.com. It's wonderful. I love it. I know you enjoy it too, y'all. Okay, y'all, here's my Dr. Toy tips and advice. When you're done, be done. You shut the door, don't open it, don't peek around the corner, don't look through the peephole. Shut it, did bolt it. Okay, be done. Don't give up on love. Don't turn bitter. Okay, try your best to keep hope and know that someone's out there for you or you are always there for yourself. You are enough. You are enough, okay? If someone comes along, they are an addition to your greatness, okay? You learn from every situation. No regrets. 
No regrets. Yes, mistakes, but no regrets. You learn from that, and you know better. Now you'll do better. Okay? You won't always feel this way, y'all. You won't always feel dark and droopy. You will, you will look back next year or next month and say, oh, I'm, I'm, I feel all right. I woke up this morning. I feel great. I, actually, I'm good. <laughs> I feel wonderful. It's not that bad. I'm going to be okay. I am okay. There will come a morning like that. Uh, you may cry tonight. You may cry tonight. You may cry a couple nights. But just know that joy, peace, and healing, it will come in the morning time, y'all. I hope this was encouraging to you. I hope that you got a lot out of it. I got a lot out of it just reading and listening to what others had to say and bringing it to you and bringing some of my experiences and, and just some of my advice to you. I, you know what? Comment. Comment below, email me, give me feedback in the Ask a Therapist link about how this podcast in particular helped you. How did this episode help you or any other advice you want to share? We can continue to share. Keep listening. Keep watching Healing Overflow with Dr. Toy, with me, Dr. Toy. And, you know, share with others because as you share with others, they heal as you heal. Your healing overflows onto everyone else. Thank y'all so much. Have a wonderful day, a week, a month, a life. See you next time.